One fine day Yuma and Numano are walking when they see two Velociraptor girls standing on the other side of the road and gossiping. Yuma, who rarely sees dinosaur girls, starts clicking pictures. Numano explains to Yuma that to avoid extinction, dinosaurs evolved and adapted. They developed lots of human characteristics and became a part of human society, but they still retained some of the primal instincts of their ancestors. Yuma wonders if they will ever see one like that. That night, Yuma decides to take out the trash, but a dino girl attacks him. She tries to scare him, but he finds her adorable. Her offends her. She tries harder to scare him, but it does not affect him. Suddenly, a cat appears, which scares him, and he jumps into the arms of the dino girl, which smashes her pride. The dino girl grabs the cat by her tail and scares it away. Yuma advises the dino girl to be careful around night as people target cute girls. That offends the dino girl even more, and she screams that she is Churio. A T-Rex and T-Rex are the strongest and scariest dinosaurs around. But Yuma smiles and introduces himself. His action saddens her, so he gets an idea and pretends to be scared of her. Churio gets cheered up by his fake acting. The next day, Yumuma tells his friend about his meeting with a T-Rex girl. Yuma tells him that Churio is immodest, short-tempered, violent, and cute. At night, once again, Yumuma finds Churio going through trash again. Yuma offers her an ice cream he was eating. She eats the ice cream and loves it. Yuma tells her he will see her later because his shift is about to start. She grabs him by her tail and asks him for his address before he leaves. The next morning, when Yuma returns home, he finds his home filled with trash as a token of thanks from Churio for sharing ice cream. The next day, Churio's dino friend tells her to put on some clothes and use her assets to hassle humans, but Churio thinks clothes are painful to wear. She then advises Churio to hug a male to bring them down. Churio tries it with Yuma the next time she sees him, but squeezes him too tightly and breaks a few of his bones. A few days later, Yuma decides to give Churio a cute teddy bear, but she chews it up. A few days later, he once again brings her a present. Without opening the package, Churio pops it in her mouth. She threw it out as she didn't like the texture and taste. Yuma tells her it's not edible and that he bought this dress online especially for her. She then wears it. Churio's one dino friend. Trika asks her to go jewelry shopping with her. Churio feels a little awkward, but Trika convinces her it would be all right. The two go shopping, but instead of entering through the door, Churio enters through the wall. It's raining heavily as Yuma walks by a flower shop and sees a giant T-Rex girl standing outside in the rain, getting soaked. When he gets near her, he recognizes that it is none other than Churio. He asks her what she is doing outside and why she is getting all soaked up standing in the rain. She lifts her tail and Yuma sees a little puppy under it. She explains to him that the puppy is getting cold and it could catch a cold, so she is sheltering it with him tail. The flower shop owner comes outside and says to them that she is about to close her shop, so she doesn't mind taking the puppy-shaped garden ornament inside. She then takes the ornament inside. This plot twist causes Churio great embarrassment, and she wants Yuma to forget what he just saw. He promises her he will pretend he doesn't see her being a fool. Later that day, Churio is at Yuma's place. She is sneezing badly. Yuma informs her that she has caught a cold. She denies that and says that she is not weak and scrawny. Like a human, she totally disagrees with him that she has a cold, but she keeps on sneezing. Yuma ignores her and books an appointment at Kira Dinosaur Hospital for this afternoon. At the hospital, a boy named Kazu doesn't want to be injected, but when he sees the doctor grabbing Churio, he stops crying and gets the vaccination as he didn't want them to grab him like her. The doctor has to tie Churio to the table to vaccinate her. Yuma stands by her and promises that it won't hurt much. Churio keeps on crying that it will hurt and Yuma tries to calm her down. Meanwhile, the doctor has already pricked her three times, but she hasn't felt a thing. The doctor assures that with the help of medicine and rest, she will be fine within a week. Yama informs the doctor that he doesn't mind letting Churio rest at his place. The next morning, when Yama gets ready to go to school, he informs Churio that he is going to school and asks if she will be all right on her own and says he will be back by afternoon. Churio grabs his shirt with her teeth and warns him that he won't even think about going to class today. Yuoma assures her that he will be back in the afternoon, 
but Churio doesn't believe him and asks him to promise that he will be back soon. Yuoma assures her that he will be back soon. Churio asks him to promise her and raises her tail. Yuma understands that she wants the pinky promise. He raises his pinky finger and holds her tail with it and promises her he will be back soon. Then he repeats after her, cross my heart and hope to die. Churio still holds his pinky with her tail and warns him that she is dead serious about the pinky promise. Yumuma is walking by when he sees a T-Rex girl and a guy. The guy is shouting at the top of his lungs at the T-Rex girl, watch where you're going. It felt like you broke my bone. Yuoma thinks it's either an insurance scam or the guy is trying to pick a fight with the T-Rex girl. The guy is screaming and demanding that she better pay his hospital bill. When he goes near, he realizes that the T-Rex girl is none other than Churio. Yuma decides to help her. The guy is holding his arm and screaming at Churio that she's a huge woman and she can't swing her tail everywhere. Churio protests angrily that this was an accident. Yuoma realizes that the boy's arm is broken and thinks it will be tricky to help her. Yuoma greets Churio. She angrily tells Yuoma that this guy is yapping and that she broke his arm. The boy says that humans aren't as sturdy as dinosaurs. Yuoma suggests to the boy that rather than arguing, he should get checked out. That suggestion flips the boy, and he decides to call someone. The boy says he's not going to walk away as she broke his arm and opens a flip phone and calls someone. He tells Yumuma and Shurio that he knows someone who took on 70 thugs at a time, and each one needed a full set of dentures by the time he was done. Wait till he gets here. The boy informs them. Yuma suggests that calling an ambulance is a better idea but the boy doesn't listen and dials the call. After a bell or two, he greets the person and asks where he is, but he realizes he's talking to Yuma. Yuma and the guy stare awkwardly at each other. Churio thinks it's freaky that they're staring at each other. Yuma looks at Churio and says that he will take him to the hospital and asks her to go home. Churio asks him if she should come too as she hurt the boy. Yumuma distracts Churio by throwing a meat bun. Yuma takes the boy to the hospital, and while there in the waiting room, the guy says to Yuma that he didn't recognize him and apologizes. The guy opens his phone and asks Yuma to give a carefree smile. Yuma says to the boy not to click pictures. Yuma asks the boy if he doesn't mind if he asks something. The boy says to Yuma that he can ask him anything. Yuma asks his name as he has forgotten it. The boy replies that he is Hiroya Kajishima the underclassman who used to buy his smokes every day. Yuma says he remembers now that they used to eat together at the place across from the school. Kagishima says that they've never eaten together and Yuma is mistaken and he has said too much. After getting bandaged, Kagishima says to Yuma that he looks different and it's nice meeting him. Yuma smiles and says to Kagishima he would like a favor from him. Yuma requests that he doesn't spread stories about him from high school especially to the T-Rex girl from earlier. Hearing about the T-Rex girl angers Kagi. He curses Churio and says to Yumuma that the reptile didn't even apologize to him. Hearing Churio's insult wakes up the monster inside Yuma. After a little while, Yuama meets Churio and introduces Hiroya Kagishima to her and then says that now they have established that both of them are his friends. He asks her to make up with the boy and put the past behind her. Churio looks confused and asks Yumama why Kagishima is looking more beaten up than before he went to the hospital. Yumama says that Churio is imagining things and asks Kagishima to confirm. Kagishima agrees painfully and Yuama holds their hands to make them shake his friends. Churio is at Trika's place and Trikai tells Churio that her clothes are in tatters as there is hardly anything left of them. But Churio, she has only had them for a month. Trika says to her that she knows these are the only clothes Churio has. Trika offers Churio some old clothes she was about to throw out. Trika asks Churio to pick clothes for herself from the box. But Churio says to Trika that anything would be fine for her. Teresa chooses a dress for Churio saying it will look cute on her. But Churio says she likes the dress that is open from the front. Trika gets annoyed saying Churio just said anything is fine. Trika tells Churio that she should totally get some jewelry. Churio, this is the stuff Trika has always been into. 
Patrika stands on the stool and starts taking off pieces of jewelry that are hanging on the wall. Cheerio asks Trika why she hung all the jewelry on the wall. Trika replies that she remembers how Cheerio ate her necklace once when she was little, so she had to keep it out of her reach so she didn't think they were food. Cheerio gets angry and warns Trika not to make fun of her as she is not a kid anymore. Trika apologizes to her and Churi tries reaching for them to show she is big now, but Trika stops her with her tail. The two buy lots of stuff and when Trika sees Churio's nails, she says to her that her nails are just as tattered as her clothes and every girl should have her own nail file. Yuma is wandering in the market when he sees Churio with Trika and thinks that she is with another dinosaur. When she turns, he sees she is holding a large nail file. When Churio sees him, she tells him that she bought herself a neat stick, and he says it looks intimidating. Trika asks Yumuma if he is Churio's friend. Yuma introduces himself to Trika. She also introduces herself and says it's nice meeting him. Trika think about teasing Churio and pulls her aside and asks if he is her boyfriend. Churio denies it and Trika confirms again. Trika then informs her that she would have a go at Yuuma and asks him if he would like to spend the day with her. Before Yuuma can reply to Trisa, Cheerio cries to Trisa that she is a ditcher because she promised her they would go for shawarma. Trika says she was just kidding. Then the three of them go to a shawarma place together. Trika asks Yuuma to tell Cheerio to be more proper because she is drooling. Yuma wipes her face and tells Trika that she is cute the way she is. Yumana and Churio race to see who eats shawarma faster. Churio wins because she eats shawarma in one bite. After having a nice time at the shawarma place, they decide to go home as it is getting dark. Yuma asks Churio where she lives. She replies that she lives in an abandoned factory at the edge of town. Then Yumuma suggests to Churio that she should stay over at his place again. Trika says to Yumuma that he is too direct. Churio complains to Yuma that his place is dinky and hard to sleep in for her. Yuma assures her that he will try to make it more comfortable, but she suggests sleeping on the park equipment. At Yuma's place, Churio takes most of the futon. Yuma is sitting by the wall and wonders if she will get be mad if he asks her to sleep together. Churio tells Yuma that it is cold and pulls him close to her and wraps around him. Hiroyakaji Shima thanks Yuuma for filling in for someone and helping him with balloons and asks if Churio will help too. Yuma says to Hiroya that it is easier with more people and Churio asks Yuma if she could get something tasty to eat for her help. Hiroya explains the job to them and says it is very simple and he guesses they should be okay, but suddenly Churio pops a balloon which angers Hiroya. He hits her and she hits him back. Hiroya says to Yuuma that this is not working. Yuuma agrees with him and says he should apologize to Churio. Hiroya walks out and calls Motomura and insults him that because of his cold, they are stuck with dinosaurs. Motomura tells Hiroya to chill because dinos are hot and it will pull lots of customers. Hiroya tells him this one is different and is no brain in all brawn. Yumu asks Hiroya from behind if he is talking about Churio. He gets so scared that Yuuma heard him and he will get beaten once again, but Yuuma isn't angry at all, which confuses him. Yuuma tries to teach Churio how to smile and how to deal with customers. Hiroya also shows her. Churio tries a few times, but she fails and the kids run away from her. Yuuma sneezes and Churio asks him if he is okay. He replies it is getting cold. Churio tells Yuma that she will warm him up, and she never did this for anyone before and puts him under her. Later that day, Hiroya thanks Yumuma for helping him. Yuma says it is no problem, and he leaves with Churio. After they leave, Hiroya starts walking and says to himself that this dinosaur got him more tired. He is not looking and walks into someone. Hiroya gets angry and shouts at them to watch where they're going. His anger melts away when he sees a beautiful dino girl. Hiroya thinks she is like an angel and apologizes. Later that night, Trika meets Churio and tells her that guys are easy, and today one boy bought her dinner and a necklace. One day, Trika sees Churio carrying a trash can and asks her if it's for you, Uma. Churio tells her not to get any funny ideas, because this trash is a thank you present for Yuma due to the things he has done for her. Trika laughs and says the only funny thing is her choice of present. She suggests to Churio that if she wants to thank him, she should do some home cooking for him. 
That day, Yumei is walking through the market when he sees Churio standing in front of an electronics store. He wonders why she is squatting in front of an electronics store. He goes behind her, puts his hands over her eyes, and asks her to guess who. Churio stands up and Yuama's hands slip from her eyes to her chest. He apologizes and says he wasn't aiming for that. She tells him they should go to his place and cook. Then she picks him up by her tail and carries him off while Yumuma thinks she is so angry she might eat him. She tells him she is cooking for him, which makes him happy, and he asks what she is cooking for him. She tells him that it's chicken and egg rice as they walk by the supermarket. Yuma tells Churio to stop by the market because they need to buy a few ingredients that are not at home, like eggs. Churio laughs and says she would lay an egg, but Yama says it's too organic for him. They go to the meat section in the supermarket. As Churio picks up a pack of meat, at the same moment, another dino girl picks up the same pack. Churio and the other dino girl say to each other that they picked it first. The next moment, a fight breaks out between Churio and the dino girl. After the fight, Churio holds the pack of meat in her mouth and says she won. Yumuma and Churio then go home and Churio starts to cook. Churio says that on TV, they said the secret ingredient is love and starts talking to an onion in a cute way. Yama tries to tell her that's not what they meant by the secret ingredient. The moment she cuts the onion, it starts stinging her eyes. Die, you onion. She screams and chops it into tiny pieces. As Churio is cooking, she sees Yuuma grinning. She asks him why he's grinning and he tells her he's thrilled because it's the first time a girl has come over to his place and cooked for him. Churio says she's thrilled too, because she cooked for the first time with fire, which worries him. When Yuma and Churio sit at the table to eat, Yuma observes that there is too much meat in the bowl. Churio looks at the bowl and says she followed what they did on TV. She explains to him that meat is supposed to be bite size. Yuma understands and says these are T-Rex bite size, Churio sadly says to him, he doesn't have to eat if he doesn't like it. Yuma thanks her and takes a bite from his bowl. Yuma thinks the food actually tastes good. He compliments her that the food is really tasty and likes it. Churio says to him that meat is always tasty and orders him to finish his meal and wonders why she's feeling giddy. The next day, Churio is mad at Yumuma for breaking the promise he made. Yumuma remembers that in the morning Churio had found a football and invited him to play. Absent-mindedly, Yuma promised that he will play after class but had forgotten it. Yumuma apologizes to Churio and tells her he made plans with his friend first. He points toward his friend and explains that they have to study together for the test. Churio screams at him that she has been waiting for him since morning. The boy beside Yama tells him he should go. Yama asks the boy to help him with his studies. The boy protests that she will kill him. Yumuma informs the boy that she is nice as long as she is not mad. The boy protests again that she looks mad. Yumuma assures the boy and says she is just a little wary because she is meeting him for the first time. The boy introduces himself as Itsuki Numano. Before Numano can say anything, Chirio swings her tail and launches the ball and hits Numano in his face with it. Yuma tries to play it off as her breaking the ice by playing catch, but Numano understands that she wants him to get lost. Yuma tells Numano to make himself at home and he can use the kotatsu if he wants to. Yuma then goes to the kitchen to get something to drink. Numano goes to the kotatsu to sit, but sees Churio hiding under it. Numano sits beside the wall. When Yuma returns, he sees Numano sitting by the wall and says to him that he can use the kotatsu. Numano turns to him sarcastically, asking if he means the man-eating kotatsu. Yuma puts the tray down and says he is going to use the restroom and tells Churio to not try to eat Numano, which makes Numano panic, but Yuuma says it was a joke and goes to the washroom. While Yuuma is away, Numano tries to smooth things out by offering food to Churio, but that doesn't work out. Churio gets bored when Yumuma and Numano are studying because she can't understand a word they are saying. Yuama invites Churio to come sit with them and have tea. After struggling for a while with her large tail, Churio goes to Yuma. Holding her tail, Churio tells Yuma she can't have tea because her hands are full. After a while, Churio starts taking an interest in books, so Numano gives her books with pictures that are targeted towards four to five years old. 
She enjoys them by making a house with them. After a little while, when their work is complete, Numano says to Yuman that he will see him at school. Yuma thanks? Numano for his help? Yuma now is about to leave. Churio picks him up with her tail, bumps her head with his, and apologizes to him for hitting him with a ball. She asks Numano if it still hurts. Numano replies not anymore, which shocks Yuama. On his way back home, Numano thinks he didn't used to believe that T-Rexes and people can get along. The next day at school, Yuuma holds Numano's face and asks him if it still hurts so he can massage it. Numano thinks people are annoying when they are jealous. Chirio and Trika roaming around a shopping mall, buying things from different shops when they bump into Hiroya. Shurio greets him and asks if he's there for the sales. He tells her he's just running some errands for Yuema. Hiroya greets Trika and says it's been a while. Trika apologizes and asks him if they've met before. Hiroya reminds her of their encounter over Christmas. Trika remembers him. Hiroya says with excitement that she's wearing the necklace he gave her. Trika is confused about what he's talking about. Then she remembers and replies that this necklace is so special to her among all the necklaces she has. Hyria feels great that Trika values his gift so highly. He's so happy he could hurl and almost does so, but Trika thinks it's the exact 100th necklace she received from a man. After a few minutes, Trika exclaims that her nail tips are missing. She says she must have left them in the fitting room. She sadly mentions that she really liked them but is too tired to look for them and doubts she'll find them anyway. Hyria offers to find them for her. Trika asks if he really can find them. She warns him she's been to lots of shops, so it might be difficult for him. Hiroya assures Trika he'll be fine. She just has to tell him the shop she went through. She tells him she's been through all the shops from the third to the seventh floor, around 60 shops, but Hiroya corrects her that it's 63. Chirio, a silent witness to the conversation, comments that it would be painful. Hiroya promises to find the nail tips and leaves. 10 minutes later, Trakai puts her claws in her coat pocket and finds her nail tips there. After a while, Hiroya returns tired from searching through the stores. When Hiroya returns, he learns that Trika found her nail tips. Trika apologizes again and suggests they all go to the food court. Trika apologizes once more to Hiroya and offers him a glass of water. As Hiroya holds the glass of water and Hiroya tells her she didn't have to do this for him, Trika tells Chirio that Hiroya feels much better after the water, so now he's buying her some creeps. Hiroya buys creeps for Trika and Chirio. Hiroya treats Trika with love and care. Trika tells them she needs a moment because she has a call to make. Chirio asks Hiroya if he really likes Trika. Hiroya asks Chirio how she knows. Chirio tells him that it seems he wasn't even trying to hide it with the way he's been acting all day. Trika returns and tells Hiroya and Shurio that she was talking to the exterminator because she found mice at her place. She tells them she's so scared of mice, even the smallest ones. Trika says that if she were brave like Churio, she'd get rid of the mice herself, but she's not brave. Churio tells Hiroya and Trikaya that she's scared of mice too because she once ate a mouse and it totally wrecked her stomach and she wasn't able to move for three days. Chirio advises them never to eat a mouse. When it's time to leave, Trika asks Hiroya for his number so they can hang out again some other time. Trika pulls out one of her feathers and gives it to Hiroya, saying it's just for him and he should have it. Hiroya takes it and thinks he must treasure it as much as he treasures Treaser. Later that day, when Hiroya returns home, he searches for a place to keep the feather. Hiroya thinks about all the places he could keep it like a box, book, or a safe. Then, he decides he can't keep the beautiful feather hidden and out of sight. Hiroya puts Trisa's feather in a beautiful frame and places it on his table. The next day, when Yuma comes to Hiroya's house to collect the things Hiroya both for him, he sees the framed feather and prays for it and wonders if Hiroya had a purr bird that died and feels pity for him and asks if he is fine, to which he replies he is good. A little Dino kid is separated from his mother and is crying. Yumoma and Churio inquire the kid about his name and where he last saw his mother. The kid reveals his name is Noel and he can't remember where he lost his mother. Yuuma suggests that they should make an announcement together. Churio thinks she should leave the kid in Yuuma's custody as she will only make the kid cry. 
The kid tries to hold Churio's hand, which startles her. She is astonished and asks Yuuma if she will really hold the kid's hand. Churio tosses the kid on her shoulder, and Yuuma is glad to see that Churio has taken a liking to the kid. They are successful in making an announcement saying that the mother of Nawol should come to the specified place to collect her child. Once they have fulfilled their responsibility, Yumuma suggests they should leave. As they are about to leave, Nawul tugs onto the hand of Chirio and with glittery puppy eyes, asks Chirio if she is leaving. Looking at the child's innocence, angelic face, Chirio's maternal instincts kick in and she asks Yuuma if they can stay longer. To make sure Yuuma says yes, Chirio playfully threatens him with her claws. Under the influence of his survival instincts, Yumuma agrees to stay. Yuuma, however, complains it is getting dark. The child woefully exclaims, what if his mother doesn't come? Churio then crouches in front of Naol and vows she will find her mother. Naol wants to accompany Churio, but Churio suggests Naol should stay with Yuuma as her mother would be heading towards the place the announcement is made. Churio leaves and Yuuma pats Naol's head in sympathy while saying Naol's mother will be here soon. Yuuma Mi mispronounces his name. The minute Churio leaves, Naol transforms into a devilish kid. He swivels and spits on his face, saying he should keep his hand off of him, or he would call the cops on him. The sudden change in his attitude concerns Yuma, and he asks her if he is okay again, mispronouncing his name. He corrects him, and Yuma apologizes. He sits on a chair and impudently states, it's rude to ruin anybody's name. Yumina declares he thought Nawal was polite, to which he replies why he should be polite to him and spits on his face again. Nawal continues that he is only polite to strong grown-ups that he would like on his side, not losers like Yumuma. Yuma thinks that the kid is insulin and wishes he could punch him for every time he spat on him. Noel's chair topples over, and he falls, crying out loud. Churio gets back and is concerned when she sees Noel crying. She asks Noel who made him cry. Yuuma tries explaining that he fell off the chair, but Noel blames Yuuma for the crying and Churio avenges Noel by hitting Yuuma. Churio then asks Yama what he has to say for himself. Yuuma explains that Noel fell of the chair and she asks if Noel fell of the chair and he says Yuuma pushed him and Churio believes Noel's words over Yuuma's and hits him again. Noel's mom comes to get him and thanks Noel for looking after him. Noel asks Churio, if they can play together sometime since they live in close proximity. Churio excitedly agrees while Noel cunningly thinks to himself that Churio would make a great bodyguard. Noel calls Yumama from behind to say his goodbyes and hypocritically thanks him. Yuma, while affectionately patting him, covers his mouth and threatens him to not run into him again. As Yuuma and Churio leave, Yuma hopes this will make Noel stop, but Noel's eyes sparkle up as he realizes he should have sucked up to Yumama. Yume heads back home pondering over what a busy day it has been. He hears a noise that makes him curious. His curiosity dies once he spots Chirio. Yuuma asks Chirio what is wrong as it is pretty late to be wandering around. It is revealed that the abandoned factory that was home to Chirio has been demolished. Chirio exclaims where she would go now. Yumima suggests that she can stay at his place tonight. He lays out a futon for her while Chirio throws a tantrum. But before she knows it, she is fast asleep. The next morning at breakfast, Yuma suggests that Churio should rent one of the vacant apartments in the complex. She considers the option. Yuma reveals that he has already spoken to the landlord and has agreed to meet them today. Churio inquires what kind of person is the landlord. Yuma reveals it will be his first time meeting the landlord as well. The landlord is revealed to be no one but Nawal's mother. Nawal is happy to see Churio. Noel's mother apologizes for the trouble caused by her son the other day and comments that fate works mysteriously. Yuma wondered to himself if the landlord will evict him if she found out he yelled at her son the other day. The adults are seated on the table. The landlord reveals that the first and second floors have vacant units available and tells them they can have a look. Nawal is acting all adorable and nice in front of Yuma. Nawal desires that Yuma be nice to him and look after him. However, Yuma is trying to maintain his distance and wonders why the kid is being so docile since he got here. Yuma tries to suppress his urge to pet him as he is an adorable kid but eventually gives in to the cuteness. 
Yuma wonders what is with the kid that he couldn't control himself. The landlord takes Chirio and Yuuma to tour the vacant units. She leads them to Unit 103 right next to Asahaikawa's and tells them they are free to look around. Yuma wonders what dinosaurs look for in an apartment. Chirio looks around for a second and is impressed. Yuma wonders to himself if Chirio's expectations could get any lower. The landlord hands over the key to Chirio. Yuoma suggests that Churio should give a spare key to Yuma. Churio asks why should she do that, and Yuoma replies that she will definitely lose the keys. Yuma tries to reason with her that she will be in a lot of trouble if she loses the key. Churio irritably says that she will keep them in a safe place and proceeds to put them in her mouth. Churio asks the landlord if it is okay if she stays there as she has no money on hand. The landlord tells her that the rent is pretty feasible and a part-time job will easily cover it. Yuoma asks why the rent is so cheap as the complex is in a pretty good location. The landlord reveals it is because a lot of tenants have left because a dangerous T-Rex is wandering around. Churio is the T-Rex the landlord is referring to and Yuoma thinks it would be best to not ask any more questions. Later, Yuma comes around to see how Churio is doing in the new place. He knocks on the door and asks if Churio can hear him. Churio is scared and rushes out of the house looking for Yumuma. She then hugs Yuma out of fear and claims the walls are talking to her. Churio needs a job to pay her rent and she is trying to write her resume. Yuma comes to check up on her and brings Churio snacks. Churio snaps back at him and tells him it is hard enough to write with a pencil already. Yuma agrees but sarcastically says if it really takes an hour to write the address. Yumai then points out that Churio wrote a letter wrong, which vexes Churio, and she screams that she has to write the entire resume over again. Yuma sarcastically comments that she can use an eraser. Another dinosaur cram, the Ankylosaurus, is introduced. She works part-time at a moving company, but she isn't good with words. It's been six months since she started working at the company, but she still isn't close to anyone. An employee comes up to Kram and asks her to help out Churio as it is her first day at work. Kram wonders that since they are both dinosaurs, they will definitely get along. Churio introduces herself and Kram in excitement wags her tail, which accidentally strikes a pillar. Her strong and sturdy tail breaks the pillar, which freaks out Churio. Churio exclaims that she has a short temper and the other employee apologizes on behalf of Kram. Kram continues her efforts to befriend Churio. The employee, Churio and Kram are running errands. The employee mentions to Churio that he is grateful for strong and sturdy dinosaurs as they are very useful to humans. Kram thinks that a friendly smile can solve it all. She wonders how to give a friendly smile. She looks at an idol's photograph and concludes she should show her teeth while smiling. She calls Churio and smiles at her. Churio misinterprets the smile as a glare and glares back. Cram assumes she has succeeded and Churio is smiling back at her. Later on, Cram thinks to herself that she wants to be someone Churio can rely on. She spots Churio carrying a box of cutlery down a flight of stairs. Corio then slips, which makes Cram think that this is her chance and she won't let Corio become the clumsy part-timer who broke cutlery on her first day. She jumps on the floor to stop the cutlery from breaking. Her efforts are futile as the cutlery breaks anyway due her hard body. Due to the recent events, Churio is sad and doubting herself. Cram goes over to cheer her up by showing her a magic trick as magic is Cram's hobby. She makes a perfect butterfly knot, which excites Churio. Cram says she wags her tail whenever she is happy, but it also swings her club, which can do a lot of damage. Back in the day, her club would save her harm, but now she only has one solution, to amputate the club, part of her tail. She tries to do it, but ends up breaking her hand instead. Churio is getting a relaxing massage after working arduously. Yuma comments that Churio must have worked days in a row as her muscles are sore. Churio feels so blissful after the massage she tells Yuuma that it's his turn now. Yuuma turns it down saying he can't get a shiatsu from a dinosaur and hands her a book, A Beginner Guide to Massage. Churio taps his shoulder with the book to give him a massage, but he tells her to read it first. Yuma is wandering when he sees Nowell atop a tree branch and bawling his eyes out asking for help as he can't get down. Yuma helps him down and asks him if he can't fly as he is a pyrosaur. Noel answers he can't fly yet, 
Nao hugs Yuma for saving him, but Yuma is eager to leave. When Yuma tries to leave, Noel impedes him, saying he should stay. This reminds Yuma of how Noel made a complete fool out of him last time. He angrily asks Noel if he knows what he did to him. Noel apologizes for his past misdeeds. He then says he gave Yuma a hug for saving him, but a kiss is remaining and also allows Yuma to pat his head and outstretches his arms and tries to kiss Yuma, but Yuma stops him midway. They are interrupted by two dinosaur girls sitting in a tree who start making fun of Noel for not being able to fly. Yuma asks Noel if the twins are his friends and Noel enlightens him they are only family friends. One of the twins comments his wings are only for a show while the other one mordantly says, have you ever heard of a papterosaur who can't fly? Yuma stands up for Noel, but an enraged Noel tells them to come down for a fight. Noel then tries hard to act polite and takes the bag Yuma is carrying, saying he will carry it. The change in Noel's behavior makes Yuma suspicious, and he asks him what he is up to, to which Noel replies, absolutely nothing. Noel then says that Yuma acts too nice to be true too, so he can't know Yuma isn't hiding anything. He then suggests that Yuma could have been bad growing up. Yuma acknowledges that the kid is sharp. He, however, lies that it isn't true and it was rude of Noel to suggest it while sweating profusely. Noel comments that he is sweating a lot. Noel reveals that he likes strong people, and that is why he is starting from a clean slate, trying to get Yuma to like him. Yuma commends him for his honesty while also telling him his vile thoughts are leaking. Yuma is so immersed in conversation with Noel that he accidentally steps on another dinosaur's tail. The dinosaur tries to pick a fight, but Yumuma requests him to not be violent in front of the kid. Yumanga gets the idea that if he loses the fight and gets beaten up in front of Noel, he will lose interest in him. Yuma tries hard to get beaten up, but his natural reflex actions are activated, causing him to overpower the dinosaur, further impressing Nawal. It is revealed that back in high school, Yuuma was a delinquent. He liked a girl and friends forced it out of him who the girl was. He reveals that the girl he likes is Haruna Kasamori. His friends tell him that girl isn't pretty and he can do better. Yuma shouts at his friends, saying she is a kind and polite person and shouldn't be judged based on her looks. However, later Haruna rejects Yuuma for his scary personality. Back at home, Yuama is with Churio, and she notices he is off. Churio asks him what is bothering him, and he says he remembered some stuff he didn't want to. Churio asks him how bad is it. Yuma outstretches his arms and gestures it is this bad. Churio then hugs him tightly and says she will squeeze it out of him. Trika asks Churio if she wants to paint her nails. Churio originally denies saying it's too much work and it smells bad. Trika, however, insists Churio put a little bit. Churio sarcastically just puts on a small amount of nail polish. Churio says she is going home, which reminds Trika that Churio recently moved into a new place. Trika then asks Churio if she would invite her to her new place. Churio tell her to come over tomorrow. The next day, Trika drops by and Churio warns her it's a bit messy. The place is cluttered with garbage bags and Trika sarcastically asks Churio how she would define a bit. Trika enlightens Churio that heaps of trash doesn't count as furniture. Churio tells her that she has a habit of picking things up and hoarding them. She warns Trika that stuff might fall down, but she should make herself at home. Yuuma is making himself tea when he hears a loud crashing noise. He goes over to Churio's to see everything is fine, only to find that Trika hit her head. Yuuma advises that they should patch Trika up first. Churio brings band-aids, the thing that fell on Trika's head, and Yuma says this isn't what he meant. Trika then calls someone to help her clean Churio's place, while Churio petulantly says it could take days to get it done. Kajishima arrives to help, and he is shocked to see Yuuma there too. Yuuma asks Kajishima if he knows Trika. Churio reveals he has a crush on Trika, and Yuuma gets why he is so eager to help. Kagishima says he wouldn't work for free on a holiday, and he is only here because he is getting compensated. Churio asks how exactly he is getting compensated. Kagishima reveals that if he helps clean Trika will tell him her birthday. Kagishima works fervently and Yuema praises his dedication. Churio enlightens Yuema he is only doing this to find out about Trika's birthday. Churio mordantly states that only Kagishima would work for a birthday. 
Trika butters Keijishima up with compliments like he is so strong, which drives him to eagerly finish all work. Chirio is holding a couple of bags in her hands and exclaims that Kagishima is really having fun. Trika makes her understand that guys are really simple. With a little flattery, they will do anything. Chirio tries the tactic on Yumuma by saying he is very cool and amazing and asks him to take out the trash. However, Yuma beats her at her own game by calling her the strongest T-Rex and by bribing her with candy. Churio eventually carries all bags. After all the work is done, Trika pays her gratitude to Kajishima and hands him a note with her birthday on it. It turns out Trace's birthday is next month and Kajishima is planning it out on his way back. Churio then asks Trika if she gives every guy a different birthday. Trika affirms it and tells her it is basically her birthday every day. She then turns around to show a beautiful artifact adorning her tail, which she got as a present last week. The pristine room isn't setting right with Chirio. She then calls Yuwuma because she feels lonely but Yuwuma apologizes saying his shift is about to start. Yuwuma asks Chirio if she feels lonely when he is gone, but she denies it. However, she diligently waits for him to come back. Earlier when Shurio had gotten sick, Yuuma thought about making porridge for her, and when her returns, she doesn't recognize him at first, but does so when he says her name. Shurio says her nose is clogged, so she can't smell him well, and he wishes she would recognize him by more than just smell. Yuuma asks Teresa if Shurio always went without clothes, but she says Shurio wore cute outfits and shows him a pic of her happy in new clothes. And then another three days later in which she is sad as the clothes are torn due to her growing up. Yuma and Chirio are at a restaurant and he asks her if she is ready to order and she is and tries calling the waitress and Yuema points at the buzzer and tells her to use it but instead of pressing the button, she throws it at her. Before Krayam started working at a moving company, she noticed that the waitresses at a diner had cute dresses and wondered if they took applications from dinosaurs and asks to speak for the manager but the way she did made them think she was complaining about something, and she gave her a coupon, and she thinks she can't do customer service. Trika is shocked that Chirio doesn't have a fridge. Chirio asks why is she asking this question, and Trika tells her she wanted to keep her cream puff. Trika has no option but to open it then. Churio greedily stares at the cream puff and Trika agrees to share it with her. Churio voraciously starts eating the cream puff while Trika keeps reminding her, she can't eat the whole thing. Later, they have gone to buy a fridge as Chirio realizes she has saved enough money. The saleswoman then unloads a ton of technological jargon on Chirio about why the particular fridge is good that Chirio doesn't understand. And in the end, the saleswoman just says that there is a lot of space inside and she agrees to buy it. When she gets the new fridge home, she is elated because her house looks so much trendier. She calls Yuuma over to flaunt her new fridge. When Yuuma comes over, Chirio is hiding the fridge by standing in front of it and asks him if he notices anything. The only thing Yuuma notices is the packing tape adhering to Chirio's hair. She then moves aside to show him the fridge. Yuuma suggests she should buy a smartphone too. She is startled by the mention of a smartphone and asks if it is beneficial. Yuuma enlightens her that you can call, text, and email through it. He then hands her his cell phone so she can get a gist of it. She then stares at the black screen for a minute and then complains it's not showing anything. Yuma tells her she has to push the button for it to work. Chirio mistakes the home button for the button on Yuuma's shirt and starts poking his shirt button. Yuma asks Trika and Chirio if they want the sweets he got at work. They start squabbling over the sweets. Yuma suggests they settle it by rock, paper, scissors. They comment that they aren't kids, but it can work. However, their version of rock, paper, scissors in involves punching. Later on, Chirio is weeping to Yumoma because her fridge isn't working and urges him to call the ambulance. Yumoma discloses that the fridge was only unplugged and calls her silly. She gets mad for a second and then questions how a fridge can be silly. Chirio brings over Yuma's phone as he forgot it at her place. Yume is asleep on the study table with his head dumped in books. Chirio tries to figure out why the smartphones are so useful. She then notices that the wind is blowing away papers and puts the smartphone on the papers to prevent them from flying away. She assumes that this is why they are handy. Trika asks Kajishima if he wants to go shopping with her and also requests him to bring Chirio. 
Kagoshima forces Churio to come along even though she argues that Trika only wants them there to hold her bags. Kagoshima asks her to stop ranting. Churio challenges him if he can push her through the door, she will accompany him. He smartly throws a meat bun out the door and she greedily runs after it to fetch it. Kagoshima smugly says that he didn't even need to use both hand. On their way to the mall, Kagoshima asks her what Trika does. Churio tells him she is a waitress at a cafe by the station. Kagoshima asks her if Trika would be okay with him dropping by the cafe. Piqued by his questions, Churio tells him to ask Trika himself. He replies that she will run away if he asks so many questions. Trika finally comes and hands them juices. Kagishima comments that she must be a great waitress as she is so caring which creeps her as she never told him what she does. At one of the shops, Kagishima is staring at a love life charm and recalls they never worked for him. Trika asks him if he is going to buy the bracelet. Kagishima tries to cover up by saying he just thought they looked nice. Trika comments that the charms here are really good which drives Kagishima to buy them. Churio asks Trika if they really work and she replies they do. Trika recalls the time she brought a wealth charm and met Kagishima the same day. The line at the ice cream shop was huge. Trika devises a game whoever is the tallest will have to stand in the line for the ice creams. Churio is the tallest one and doesn't get the cunning planning of Trika and assumes she lost and thus has to stand in the line. She turns back and roars angrily which worries Kagishima. However, she still didn't notice Trika's slyness and turned back to only ask which flavors they want and Trisa asks for strawberry. Kagishima exclaims it's hot and Trika starts to fan him with her tail which causes him to sweat even more because he is nervous. Cheerio accidentally drops her ice cream and starts weeping and asking if she can still eat it off the ground Trika, tells her that she will buy her another one and the two pacify her. Trika comments they are like parents, which makes Kajishima wonder if it sounds like they are married. Churio says that it is very conspicuous that Kajishima likes her and he should express his feelings. He says he can't yet and Churio shouldn't dare tell her. Churio thinks it is stupid as she must have noticed anyway. Churio gets an idea to make Kagishima fall to the ground by swinging her tail but accidentally falls on him, injuring him greatly. Trikai meets Kajishima a week later and inquires about his health. Trika asks him if she can address him as Hiro from now onwards. He is ecstatic upon hearing this as he assumes Trika gave him a nickname while in reality, she forgot his full name. One day after work, Krom asks Hyurio if she would like to walk home together. Chirio agrees, which makes Krom ecstatic, and she starts wagging her tail. Churio is mad at her wagging tail and says it could actually hurt somebody. Cram explains that she carries a first aid box. Churio replies that the damage that the tail would do can't be managed by the first aid box. While walking, they drop by Trika's cafe. Churio reveals Cram wanted to meet her. Trika asks if they require a table for two. To this, Cram asks if her friends can join too. She then introduces them to four dolls named Mary, Luca, Nami, and Yulia. She then takes out another doll and introduces her as Yami and apologizes to Yami. Churio ordered Trisa that she needs to give them a table for two. Krom says she is glad they could meet her friends. Trika tries to be nice to her and takes one of the dolls and says, Hi, Luca. Krom corrects her, that's Nami. Churio says to Trika that it is creepy, but she urges her to play along. Trika emphasizes that Kram thinks they are her friends. Kram then further tells them that the best thing about her friends is that you can eat them and then munches one. Trika asks Kram and Churio if they are partners at work. Kram abruptly replies that they are friends. Trika suggests that they should be friends too then. Kram then writes up a friendship agreement, which baffles the other two. Later, Trika brings Kram a cookie and Kram suggests that it is too big and they should share it. Kram says she has always wanted to share food with her friends and they are both her friends. This makes Cheerio a little warm towards her, but Kram then divides the cookie by punching it, breaking it into small crumbs. Trika then tells them she will join them once her shift ends. Observing her facial expressions, Trika asks Cheerio if Kram is mad. Kram replies that her face is just strange. She says it's the first time she is having a girl's night out and she is actually smiling. She reveals that even though she worked as a waitress before she could never learn how to smile. 
She reveals that back in the day, their faces were covered in tight armor so their facial muscles are very tight today. She can force her face into a smile, but then it is so painful that she can't talk. Cram starts visiting Trika's cafe frequently and gained weight. To counter the increased weight, she bought a treadmill, other than running on it, mistook it was used for weightlifting. A few days later, she developed abs, but she wanted a smooth belly and so got mad at, at the machine and broke it. Yuma is university when a classmate tells him the next lecture is canceled. Yuama thanks him, but asks him if they know each other. He introduces himself as Numano and tells him that they have the same major and year. Yuma asks him that they have never spoken so, how come Numano knows his name? Numano replies that Yuama always wears really flashy clothes, thus he is easy to remember. Yumama looks at his shirt with dragons on it and asks if it is flashy and explains that he tries to go for simple and plain clothing. He then observes Numano and asks where he got his clothes from. Numano is left wondering if Yuma thinks his clothes are plain and bland. Later at lunch, Yuama offers Numano a radish and tells him he stewed it himself. Once Numano eats it, Yuama reveals he only needed to know if the radish was edible as he bought it last month. Numano replies that he isn't his food tech. Yumaima then shows Numano dinosaurs he handcrafted for Churio and asks if they are cute. Numano wonders if Yuma wants to be a house husband as he has great domestic skills. Yuma then contemplates that stuffed animals aren't the right gift for Churio as she will rip them apart in seconds. He then thinks he should either make something too big to fit in her mouth or fill the stuffed animals with meat or cookies. He then asks Numano what kind of stuffing would make him happy. Numano responds by saying first of all he would be heartbroken because the animal is ripped. All of a sudden Churio comes and drags Yuuma away leaving Numano shocked that he was dragged away by a T-Rex. Churio reveals that she got some good meat and they should make curry. Yumiyama allows her to use his pots as long as she gets the ingredients. Numano freaks out for a moment when he saw Churio carrying meat as he thought it was Yumi. Later, Yumiuma reveals to Numano that they are neighbors. Churio starts cooking. Numano asks Yumai if Churio will be okay on her own as he noticed black smoke wafting and Yumuma asks if she turned on the fan eventually setting off the smoke detectors. Churio screams at it to make it stop beeping and Yuma enlightens her that screaming won't make it stop. Yumama then makes the curry. Churio is, has her small plate filled with curry, so Yuma offers her a bigger plate. After the meal, Churio lies down and Yuma teases her that she will grow fatter if she lies after the meal. Churio enlightens him that if she lies on the right side, it is food for her digestion. It turns out Churio is actually lying on her left side because she is unable to differentiate between right and left. As Numano is on his way out, Churio snatches his glasses. He asks Yuma for help, who shouts at Churio at which he thinks that Yuma has guts. Yuma asks Churio if he thanked Yumumano properly, to which Numano replies that it is not a gift and he would like it back. Yuma is politely requesting Churio for the remote because he wants to check the weather. Churio refuses blatantly holding the remote in her mouth. Yumama tries to reason with her that she can watch reruns of her show. She answers back that he can do the same. He says that would be the most useless rerun. On another day, Churio is watching TV again, that too by sitting in close proximity. Yumama tells her she shouldn't sit so close to the TV. When she doesn't budge, he tries to pull her back while complaining that she will lose her sight. Churio lamely answers if she loses them, she will get them back leaving Yuma baffled about how that even works. Yume opens his fridge to look for food only to find out it's empty because he is supposed to do groceries today. Churio inquires if Yumana is hungry and suggests that she can bring something back from her place. To his disappointment, she brings back barbecue sauce. Later, Yuma asks Churio if she doesn't like bath. Churio asks him why he brought that up. Yuma replies that there is always stuff like leaves and dirt stuck to her. Churio gets mad and says he thinks she is a disgusting reptile who doesn't even take a bath. Yuoma tries to explain that it is not what he meant but is cut off by Churio, who declares she takes a bath every month. Yuoma is disgusted that she doesn't bathe every day. Yuoma is around looking for his phone. He asks Churio to get up but Churio is adamant that she didn't sit on it. Eventually, the phone is under her feet and she accuses Yuma of planting it there. 
Umama suggests that they should play the horror game Numano lent him. Chirio says she hasn't played one before and Yuuma says that he hasn't either. He then teases her by saying if she finds it too scary, she can pass the controller to him. Once they start playing, both are scared to death. The skeletons, fossils, and monsters freak them out. They both agree that they are scared. Yuma tells her that it is easier to fall in love when you are scared. Then they basically pretend to be in love with the monsters. Later, Yuma comes to sleep at Churio's place, saying she is probably too scared to sleep alone after the game. When Yumuma suggests that Churio might be scared, she is furious because she is not a scaredy cat. However, she lets Yumuma sleep over as she is too tired to chase him right now. Each summer, the seaside bluffs become a training ground for young pterosaurs. Due to Noel's mother having urgent matters to attend to, Churio and Yumuma are tasked with bringing Noel to his lesson instead. Young Noel tells Churio that he needs to go to the bathroom. Churio informs Yuuma that Noel needs to go. Yuma tells Churio that Noel just went and warns her not to let him run off again, cautioning her not to put him down. Noel is tied with a rope on Churio's back. Noel thinks to himself that if he doesn't escape soon, he'll have to endure those flying lessons again this year. He feels the need to get out of these ropes. Noel comments that tying a child with rope is too much and threatens Yuma and Churio that he will report it to his mom. Yuma tells Noel that his mom said it's okay. They meet Noel's teacher, who assures them not to worry, mentioning she's known Noel for the past three years and that he'll get the hang of it this year. Noel attempts to make an excuse about his legs being broken, asking if he can sit it out. Yuma points out that he's standing perfectly fine and tells Noel that he can come up with a better excuse. The teacher informs Noel that they are doing warm-ups and that she'll see her at the cliff. Noel can't believe it and responds with disbelief. Yuma tells Noel that no one's dumb enough to believe such a weak excuse. Yuama bids Noel goodbye and advises him to listen to his teacher. Yuama and Churio leave Noel with his teacher and head to the beach. The teacher gives Noel a dress to wear, but it doesn't fit. The teacher apologizes to Noel, promising to fix the dress and find something from her own stuff. Noel tells his teacher that she can't fix the dress until she finds a needle and thread. The teacher offers milk and a snack, assuring Noel that he'll grow into it. Noel and the other young parasaurs head to the cliff to start their flying lessons. Noel asks his teacher why they're doing it on the cliff and why they can't do it somewhere safer. The teacher explains that they've been training on cliffs for millions of years, ever since the times of their ancestors. She tells Noel that training on cliffs is a tradition with generations of history and that her first flight started on a cliff too. Noel says that tradition is just grown-ups, making the next generation suffer the same way they did as kids. Yuma and Churio roam the beach, discussing how Noel won't be back until lunchtime and wondering what they should do until then. Churio points to a couple of girls splashing water at each other and expresses her desire to do the same. Yuuma agrees, albeit a little embarrassed. Churio swings her tail and splashes a large amount of sand on Yuuma. The teacher calls Nawal, indicating that lunchtime is over and it's time for afternoon training. However, Nawal runs away and hides behind a vending machine near Yuma and Churio. Nawal requests Yuuma and Churio not to reveal his hiding spot to his teacher. Despite his plea, the teacher finds him and takes him away. Nowrol realizes that Churio gave him away to the teacher. After a tough day, his teacher flies away, saying she will see him again next year as he couldn't learn how to fly. Nowrol goes home with Yuma and Churio. Nowrol's mother expresses gratitude to Yuma and Churio. After the long day, Nowrol says he will sleep with his mom. T-Rexes lose their teeth once a year, and it takes time for them to regrow. Trika asks Shurio why she's looking down, explaining that she goes through this tooth-shedding process every year. Trika tries to cheer her up by mentioning that they're going to a festival tonight and that she'll help Shurio put on her yukata. Yuma reminds Shurio that it's time to head to the festival and tries to enter the room, but Trika blocks his way, telling him not to go in. Eventually, Shurio comes out of the room, but she covers her mouth with her hand. Yumuma asks Churio if she's embarrassed about not having teeth. Trika jumps in, saying that she thinks Churio looks sad rather than intimidating. 
Trika adds that Churio doesn't need teeth to look intimidating, and Yuuma agrees, thinking that even without teeth, Churio's claws and strength could be intimidating. Yuuma compliments Churio on her yukata and her hair, while also telling Trika that she looks cute too. Yuma calls and invites Hiroya to the festival and playfully teases him by asking about his thoughts on Trika in a yukata. Trika holds Hiroya's arm and tells him to forget the question. Hiroya says he'll mail his thoughts on another day, with about 30 pages and double spacing, but Hiroya says a maximum of 20 words will be enough. As they enjoy the festival, they visit a candy shop where Trika playfully claims she'll turn a 300 yen candy apple into a 10,000 yen one. She unwraps the candy apple, licks it twice, and presents it as her transformed creation. Hiroya is amused and praises her, while Yumuma wonders if this is how the market works. Yuuma and Chirio move on to a water balloon stall where Chirio demands a red water balloon. After struggling for 30 minutes to pop a water balloon, Hiroya suggests that Yuma should stop trying. Despite Yuma's promise to stop after one more attempt, he holds up three fingers. Hiroya asks Yuuma how many fingers he's holding. Meanwhile, Cram observes the festival from the sidelines as she doesn't want to hit anyone with her tail and enjoys her snacks. Trika notices Cram and they greet each other. Trika and Churio approach Cram, and Trika jokes that she thought Cram was her. Trika asks why Cram is standing there, wondering if she's waiting for friends. Cram finds it unusual, considering it's not something that usually happens in real life, more like something from TV shows or movies. Cram carries Churio back home since she's tired and fell asleep. You might thanks Cram and suggests leaving Churio somewhere nearby, but Cram insists on placing her somewhere clean and safe. Yuuma realizes that Churio's home is quite a mess and thanks Cram for being considerate. He covers Churio with a blanket. Noticing that her shirts are all ripped through the middle, Yume asks Trika about it, and she explains that Churio always shreds her clothes through the middle when she takes them off, but yukatas are fine since they open from the front. Early the next morning, Churio wakes Yuma up to show him that her teeth have regrown overnight. Yuma is pleased and gives her some ham but reminds her to keep it down since it's early in the morning. He realizes it's just four. Am thinks he can sleep a little longer, but Churio acts like a snooze button and roars every five minutes so he can't sleep properly. Yuma is at Churio's place when he tells her that there was a box of random stuff outside her door last night. Churio screams at him, asking if he thought it was garbage and threw it out. Yuuma apologizes, explaining that he thought it was just random stuff she doesn't use anymore. Churio screams again, upset because that was her treasure box. She throws salt over his face, leaving Yuma to think she must be really angry to do that, but he expected her to be more physically aggressive and thinks she may fry him. Churio reaches his campus with a pole in her mouth. Numano sees Churio on the campus and wonders why the T-Rex from Yuma's place is there. Churio gets stuck in a door. Numano finds Yuma in the cafeteria and informs him about Churio. Yumama is shocked to learn that Churio is on his campus and believes she wouldn't follow him this far. Yumama tells Numano that his lecture will start soon and asks him to humor Churio if she comes by, as he angered her that morning. Numano points to his work and says he's going home after finishing it. Yumuma tricks Numano by placing a glass of juice on top of both his hands and leaves. Churio enters the cafeteria and screams, looking for Yuma. She sees Numano sitting there, grabs him with her tail, and tells him he's her hostage to prevent Yuuma from running away. Numano pleads for release, assuring her that Yuuma will be there soon, and sends a pic of her tail wrapped around him to Yuma. Seeing the photo, Yuma gets jealous, not wanting pictures of Numano and Churio being cozy. Numano pulls out a large book from his bag, and Churio thinks he's going to hit her with it. Numano thinks it's overdoing it, but he really wants to get out, so he hits himself over the head to knock himself out. Yuma walks out of his class and sees a large guy hitting on Churio. When Churio spots Yuma, she hides behind him and uses him as a decoy. After school, Churio walks away, leaving Yuma and Numano behind. Yumuma asks Churio to wait and walk together, but she tells him to go away, confident she can get home by herself. Yuma insists, worried about her safety in the busy area. He apologizes for the morning incident and asks about the box's contents. 
Chirio reveals it had the stuffed bear he gave her, surprising Yumuma that she cherished it. She says she will let it go if he replaces the bear. Later, Yuma gets another toy for Chirio, a squeaky dinosaur. Chirio puts it in her mouth, and it squeaks. Yuma playfully asks if she likes it. Chirio takes it out and bites Yumuma, saying it makes noise when she bites it, just like the noise he makes when she bites him. Trika works at a cafe by the station. She and her friends are having a meal when she receives her work schedule. She tells them she has to work straight for eight days. She asks her friends where she will find time to shop. Trika protests saying eight days in a row is crazy. Churio takes the schedule from Trika and asks if she's kidding. But they discuss the schedule between them, but Trika gets irritated and asks them to change the topic. It's raining when Hiroya enters a shop and a sales girl greets him. Hiroya doesn't respond. The sales girl thinks he looks scary and the rain seems sudden. She bets he is here to wait it out. Hiroya asks her if she works there. She replies yes. He holds nail tips and asks the sales girl if the point cards cover these. Later, Hiroya sees Trika walking out of a clinic. He goes to her and asks if she's all right. She tells him that she overworked herself and now she has pink eye and a cold. Hiroya says it's terrible. She tells him that her left eye is so itchy she wants to gouge it out. Hiroya says she doesn't need to gouge her eye. All she needs is some eye drops and good rest. Trika tells him that eye drops scare her. He asks her if it's scarier than gouging her eyes out. Hiroya walks beside Trika as she goes towards her house. She thanks him for walking her home. Hiroya and Trika see Churio and Cram by the door. Trika asks Curio and Cram what they're doing there. Cram says that the cafe told them Trika was sick, so they came to check on her. Churio asks Trika if she's alive. Cram tells Trisa she bought some food. Trika thanks them with gratitude. Cram brought fresh oranges, apples, and cherry leaves. Hiroya says he will make a light snack for everyone. Chirio says she will help too. She folds clothes and tidies the shelf. Trika thanks Chirio and tells her she is blessed to have her. Hiroya looks at Trika's behavior and thinks she is acknowledging Chirio's good intentions, even though she messes up everything. Cram buys apples from the store, and Churio asks if she would like one. As Cram is giving Churio an apple, Hiroya now notices that Churio's hands are dirty. He takes wipes and cleans them and advises Churio to eat with clean hands. Trikata thanks Hiroya for the meal. Hiroya asks her if she likes her food. Trika says it is very good, and it's time to prune her feathers, and starts plucking feathers from her arms. Trika says she will do his feathers too as a thanks and bites both of his arms. Hiroya advises Trika to rest for two to three days and says to her that if she needs anything, she should call him. Trika thanks them, but she says she won't call them as she doesn't want her germs to transfer to anyone else. They all disagree with her. The next day, Hiroya comes to visit Trika and gives her a present. She thanks him, and when he leaves, she opens her present and finds nail tips from her favorite brand and a pack of cough honey drops for her cold. One day, Trika has to go to work, so she asks Chirio to babysit her nieces and nephews. Trika is grateful for Chirio's help but is concerned if it will burden her. Chirio reassures Trika that they will be fine and she shouldn't worry. Before leaving, Trika asks her niece and nephew to behave nicely. Yumema examines the amusement park ticket which Trika had given him when she asked him to help Chirio watch her nephews and nieces, but he is unsure of how he will manage the kids as he develops deep mistrust towards kids after his interaction with Two-Faced Nowl. He still goes to the park to help Chirio and decides to keep an eye on the kids. Yuma is very vigilant and advises Chirio that they should keep an eye on the kids, but Shurio is very nonchalant and allows the kids to go wherever they desire. Yuoma is very concerned as people will think they are lost and everything will be chaos. Yuma notices a new hat on one of the kids and asks him if he bought a new hat. Churio suggests that it will be easy to spot them with these eccentric hats. Ten minutes later, Yama loses Churio and the kids. Yuma thinks to himself that he should stay in one place as he lost the kids and Churio. He then gets an idea that he should put on the eccentric hat so they can easily locate him, even if the hat is embarrassing. He puts on the dino cap on his head in hopes that they will find him soon. Chirio eventually finds him and excitedly yells that there he is tearing through the crowd. 
One of the kids is deeply impressed by Chirio and tells Yuma she used her smelling capabilities to find her. Yumo sulks at the fact that he wore the hat, and it served no purpose, and he was embarrassed for no reason. He then takes off the hat in exasperation. Yuma, Churio, and the kids are wet from the last ride. Churio slips and hits her head on the pole. Yumona is concerned for Churio and asks her if she is okay as she hurt her head pretty bad. Churio states that nothing happened. However, she is in tears. Yumuma asks Churio if she is crying, but she angrily refuses. Yumuma apologizes and says it was only the water from the ride. Then they all go to get another ride. The kids want to ride the big one, but they are not allowed because they don't meet the height requirement. Yuma suggests that they should choose something that is kid-friendly. Later, Chirio exclaims that it is very hot. Yuma goes to buy drinks for everyone. Yumuma sees the extortionate prices and decides to buy small-sized drinks for the kids and a large one for Chirio. He buys a really pricey drink for Chirio to show appreciation for looking after the kids. Yuma hands over the drink to Churio and tells her that this is their most popular flavor. Instead of drinking it, Churio throws the drink over herself. Yuma laughs and thinks she doesn't care if it is the most famous flavor. All she wants is ice. They are walking when the kids see a bird mascot and start jumping on it. Yuma is astonished by the kids' reaction and questions Churio why they are jumping all of a sudden. Churio reveals that their hunting instinct has kicked in. In the end, the kids take off the bird's head and find a man inside it. A couple of Dino girls ask Yuma to click their pictures, and he goes with them. Churio gets really jealous. When Yuma returns and Churio spits on his face to mark him. Churio thinks to herself that she has to mark him so everyone knows that Yuma is taken. However, Yuma misinterprets her gesture and thinks that she doesn't want him there. That's why she spit on him. When Yume, Churio, and the kids board the last ride at the park, Yumo sees that there are lots of couples on the ride. Yuma is saddened because no one would consider him and Churio a couple. The man instructs them to hold on to their belongings firmly. Churio grabs Yuma in her tail and holds him firmly so he wouldn't fall off. Kra meets Churio at work one day and says that she heard it's Yushimura's birthday next week and she thought to bake some snacks for him. She continues that she made some trial runs and would like Chirio to taste them. Chirio eats a few and comments that they taste amazing. This lifts Cram's spirit. She gives a warm smile and replies that she feels a lot more confident after hearing the compliment from Chirio. After a while, Cram sees Chirio eating from the trash and sarcastically thinks that she no longer feels confident as Chirio would eat anything. After work, Cram and Chirio decide to head out where they bump into Yumuma and Numanono Yumuma introduces Kram and Numano, but Numano had a really bad experience with the last dinosaur he met. Kram is an introverted dino, so she really struggles when she meets new people. She thinks people always think of her as an unfriendly dinosaur. Kram thinks that Yuoma and Numano are both men, so she can ask them their opinion about what men like. But she is really struggling and trying to come out of her comfort zone and practices asking to her doll. Churio asks Numano what would be a good birthday gift for him. Numano says he wants a book with recommendations. Numano isn't able to pick a book from the top shelf, so Kram picks him up and lets him take out the book. Numano wishes he had a longer height, but Kram thinks a short height is cute. Churio tries to comfort Kram, who feels bad that her grip strength is over 500. Churio asks Yuma what he would want for a birthday gift. Yuma replies that he would be satisfied with anything she got for him. Churio asks if Yuama would be happy if Churio gave him 100 kg of meat. Yuama sarcastically replies that most people won't prefer it. And on top of that, he doesn't own a meat shop. Kram suggests buying clothes for their co-worker. They use Numano's size to buy a shirt. Yuama and Numano find out that herbivores eat small stones to help with digestion. Kram tells Numano that her facial muscles are very stiff. That's why she smiles very little. Numano understands her. Cram swings her tail and accidentally hits Numano. She tells him that she can't help herself because when she is happy, she swings her tail. Numano thinks he can endure it because she doesn't mean to hurt him. One day, Trika asks Churio to walk her to work. She agrees but asks her why and Trika tells her that there is a guy who has started coming around and won't leave her alone. 
She asks Churio to scare him a little, just enough to make him go away. Churio scares him away. The next day at work, Trika finds out that a man came before they opened the cafe and left a present for her. Her coworker asks if he is her boyfriend, but she replies that he is not her boyfriend, just some guy who is persistent and won't go away. She opens her present and finds hairpins that are not to her taste. She wears them in her hair, thinking she doesn't want to waste his effort. Hiroya then walks inside the cafe and the co-worker says that someone scary came in. But Trika assures her that he is her friend and very nice who knows everything about her. He even took care of her when she was sick. When the co-worker goes to Hiroya with a drink, she accidentally spills it on him. Hiroya doesn't get angry because this is Trika's workplace. Trika threatens her co-worker, feeling jealous and thinking she's flirting with Hiroya. The co-worker clears things up, stating that she's not flirting with Hiroya. She already has a boyfriend. She asks Tresa if Hiroya is her boyfriend. Trika denies it, thinking all the guys treat her like she's their girlfriend. Trika then tells herself that her co-worker is plain and Hiroya really likes her so she has nothing to worry about. Hiroya and Trika make plans to go shopping, and Trika gets ready, especially for Hiroya. She asks Chirio for her input. When she meets Hiroya, she pretends to be another dinosaur. Hiroya tells her that she looks different, but great. This pleases her and she tells him to pat her and she accidentally calculates in her head how much to charge him for body contact as old habits die hard. Iwama asks Churio if he can stay over as he lost the key to his apartment. Churio comments it was silly of him and he has no other option. Once he enters her place, he notices Cram is there and is going to stay at Churio's place too. Cram inquires if he lost his key. He reveals that he has and will ask the landowner for the master key tomorrow. Cram relays a story where she couldn't get into the apartment either because she lost her key. She then claims that she had a master key to get her in referring to her tail as the master key. She offers to help Yumuma as well by breaking down the door, but he refuses forcing to using brute force. Yuma asks Cram if she is okay with him staying over too. Churio asks the same question. Cram says she is fine with it, although when girls and guys stay in the same room, it could get iffy. Kira wonders to herself how she knows Yuma isn't having any thoughts. Meanwhile, Yuma feels like he is camping outdoors due to Cram's rocky tail and Churio's earthy smell. Yumaya complains of a headache and Cram comments, he doesn't look so good. Churio says she has something to help him and brings hot packs. Yuma explains to her that hot packs are for muscle pain, not headaches. Churio is not satisfied with his answer and says they are not that different. Yuma falls asleep and the two friends decide they should too. Churio stands on one leg, and when Cram questions why she is doing that, she replies that she saw on TV birds sleep like that. While they bicker about this, Yuuma is fast asleep. Cram greets Churio morning while she tells her to keep it down. Churio tells Cram that Yuuma is sleeping because he is not feeling well. She then reveals that she has been quietly cleaning up the place so she doesn't wake him up. Cram reveals that Yuuma left to see the doctor before Churio woke up, which saddens her. Yumuma reveals that the doctor said his health will be rejuvenated if he rests for a day. Chiryu tells him she is going to stay with him, but he replies it won't be interesting. Chiryu replies that she will just stay quiet and draw something then. Chiryu is intently sketching. Cram asks her what she is drawing upon seeing a skeleton. Chiryu says she is drawing Yumo. Yuuma wakes up and tells them he needs to take his medicine. Churio says he should take it with food and offers that she will bring it from her place. While Churio is about to leave, Yuuma also asks for water and calls her mom in the state of illness. They are reheating frozen food and bringing it over. Yuuma eats it and comments that it tastes like the food his mother made. While Yuuma is fast asleep, an insect is buzzing around him and it vexes him. Churio gulps the insect to stop the buzzing. Yumama continues coughing and sneezing while Churio constantly asks him if he is cold or if he needs more blankets or water. Yuma thanks Churio and Cram for taking care of him. Yuma can't sleep as the ground won't stop shaking from their movements. Churio has Noel around her shoulder while her claws are drenched in mud. She greets Trika, but Trika asks her not to come near with those mud-soaked hands. Churio agrees she got carried away while playing with Noel in the mud. Noel elatedly says they made a mud man. 
Strika comments that Churio should act like a girl. Churio claims she doesn't really get that and asks Nowell what a girl is. Nowell replies girls are half the population. Trika replies that being a girl is being considerate. It makes Churio think of Cram. Once Churio's co-worker Yoshimura had a cough and complained his throat is sore and Cram had offered him cough drops and Churio thought it must be being conisterate. Yuma is walking with Numano and he tells him how Churio and Cram took care of him when he was sick. Numano comments that sounds scary. Yuoma corrects him that they might be clumsy, but they are really nice girls. On the way home, they see garbage everywhere. Numano says that some stray cat must have done it, but Yuoma is adamant it is Churio's handiwork. Yuoma calls Churio, but she is way too absorbed in opening the trash. Yuoma has to smack Churio to get attention, but hurts his hand in the process. Yuoma is looking at a jewelry magazine when he is interrupted by Kajishima. Kagashima notices he is looking at Jewelry Magazine and Yuma reveals he wants to buy something for Churio. Kagashima says how he will choose without even knowing if she wants jewelry or not, as she is a muscle brain. Yuma points at a jewelry piece and says Churio would like it. He laughs to himself that if he made her a paper plane like this out of shiny paper, she would play for hours. Yumiuma drops by when Trika is painting Churio's nails. Churio flaunts her nail in front of Yuma and asks which one he likes the most. Yuma says anything is fine with him. Strika gets mad and says Churio is trying so hard to be stylish, and Yuma has this apathetic expression. Yuma says he doesn't know much about nail art and Churio says she doesn't either. To Trika's dismay, Churio agrees with Yuma. Trika shows them a new soap she bought and asks Churio if she wants to use it. Yuoma says the smell might trick Churio into thinking it is food and it will be dangerous. Trika agrees saying Churio thinks with her mouth. Churio overhears it and grabs Yuoma and angrily says that because she stays quiet, they always pull her leg. She then asks who would eat soap as it is bitter to which Yuoma responds you have. Trika asks Yuoma if she thinks Churio will look pretty in makeup. Yuma says he would actually like seeing Churio in makeup Trika asks if she should apply blue eyeshadow, but Churio refuses. Yuma agrees that Churio is more of a dinosaur than a girl. She rips another stuffed toy in front of him. Yuma comments that the stuffed toy is ripped apart, but Churio warns him not to throw it away, even if it is ripped to shred as it was something he gave to her. He then asks her if she wants to get another stuffed toy and she responds by saying she wants an even bigger one. Yumoma thinks to himself that she has a girly side after all. 